Here's what the world's first surviving septuplets look like today. When Bobby McCoy gave birth to seven kids in 1997, she made headlines across the globe. Today, all seven of the McCoy septuplets are in the spotlight, though the 20-somethings are all in very different places in life. We're now catching up with the family we couldn't take our eyes off of just before the new millennium, and we're amazed how they all turned out. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Prior to November 19, 1997, the day before the McCaughey kids were born, no one had successfully given birth to septuplets before. All pregnancies of seven-plus children had involved the loss of at least one child, and Bobby McCaughey worried that she might suffer a similar fate. All her babies were born nine weeks prematurely. They all lived. Earlier, when ultrasounds revealed septuplets, Bobby and her husband, Kenny McCaughey, were stunned. Bobby had been undergoing treatments for infertility, and according to doctors, her ovaries became overstimulated. She and Kenny declined selective reduction, opting to put it in God's hands. The Iowa couple already had one daughter, Michaela Marie, shown here, who was born in January 1996. And a family of ten, two adults and eight kids, sounded lovely. As the septuplets entered the world one by one via C-section, Kenny watched, describing the intense delivery room as quite a sight to see. Over six minutes, doctors successfully brought these babies into the world, four boys and three girls. Kenneth Robert, at three pounds and four ounces, was first. Next was Alexis May, at two pounds, 11 ounces, followed by Natalie Sue, Kelsey Ann, who was the smallest, at two pounds, five ounces, Nathan Roy, Brandon James, and Joel Stephen, who weighed in at two pounds, 15 ounces. Maybe you were raising children of your own in 1997, or perhaps you weren't even born yet, but we're all familiar with the challenges of caring for one child or two. Now add six or seven more, and you have the Mackay family. Surprisingly enough, the family felt there was never a worst part of their time together. As Bobby and Kenny adapted to their situation, they revealed the babies went through roughly 40 diaper changes every single day. There was also the challenge of feeding each baby, bathing them, and trying to get them through the night with a little bit of sleep. The parents needed help from outside sources. Early on, we had so much help from family and friends, Bobby said in 2015. If there was anything we needed, there was always someone who was willing to help us. Soon as the McCaughey's became celebrities, they started getting help from more than just friends and family. See, even though they were given privacy by their suburban neighbors, the McCaughey's were placed in front and center of national magazines like Time and Newsweek, the latter of which edited Bobby's teeth for the cover photo, which caused a minor controversy. This led to attention both good and bad. A flood of support came across the country. The McCaughey's were given a van, nanny services, a large house that was completely paid for, and even a call from Bill Clinton. The greatest gift of all was from the state of Iowa, which gave the kids full-ride college scholarships. Some folks were outraged. In the beginning, for every 10 letters we would get that were happy for us, we'd get one letter accusing us of exploiting the kids and being selfish to waste the world's resources on a family this big, Bobby said on the 10-year anniversary of the birth. Our neighbors never gawked, but we had complete strangers come around the back door, knock, and ask if they could hold a baby. The McCoys received a letter from the Dion quintuplets, the first known quintuplets, five babies, to survive. They were born in 1934, and they warned Bobby and Kenny to keep their kids out of the national spotlight. For the most part, the new parents took this advice, doing just a few rare interviews following 1997. This piqued public curiosity. For decades, people across the United States wondered what became of the septuplets. Were they well-rounded kids? Did they take Iowa up on those full-ride scholarships? Or were they struggling to get by like so many other children who were raised in a spotlight? Only recently did we get some solid answers. Here's what we know. All seven septuplets went to Carlisle High School in their hometown, and they graduated in May 2016. Diplomas in hand, they determined their own futures. Each sibling took a unique route. After attending Des Moines Area Community College, Kenny Jr. started vocational school for the building trade. Further away from home than anyone is the outgoing athlete Brandon, who enlisted in the U.S. Army and was deployed overseas. As for the other siblings, like her older brother, Alexis, passed up on the Full Ride University scholarship and registered at the Des Moines Community College. The remaining four septuplets, Natalie, 
Kelsey, Nathan, and Joel chose to attend Hannibal LaGrange University in Missouri, which also offered full scholarships. Their majors reflected their personalities. Sweet and perceptive, Alexis focused on early childhood education. Quiet and reflective, Joel studied computer information systems alongside determined Nathan. Kelsey majored in public relations, and the high-achieving perfectionist Natalie majored in exercise science. Parents Bobby and Kennedy discussed these decisions in 2015. Bobby shared with Today, In some respects, it's been fun because Kenny and I have been able to do a lot more things, just the two of us, but at the same time, I kind of miss the business of having everyone at home. When they're at home, it's really enjoyable and something we look forward to a lot. Even the oldest daughter, Michaela Marie, has found success outside the nest. When she was 19, Michaela, pictured here as a toddler, married, and a year after that, she had her first child, Betcham. The septuplets were officially aunts and uncles, and the next generation of the Macaulay family began. Bobby and Kenny dote on their first grandchild, though they don't see him as much as they'd like. That's because Michaela is far from home in Missouri, living with Betcham and her husband. She still brings little Betcham over to see Grandma and Grandpa every now and then, and Bobby and Kenny jump right back into parent mode, with a few noticeable differences. The love for them is the same, but the responsibility is so different, Bobby shared. While the parents are becoming more used to time with each other and their grandchild, their young children are making new memories of their own. For Alexis, Joel, Nathan, and Kelsey, going away to college was a big change. It was a difficult transition to be away from our parents and be outside of Iowa, Kelsey said, but I think that we all did welcome it. They were all given a chance to find themselves. Aside from their studies at Hannibal LaGrange University, Alexis, Joel, Nathan, and Kelsey are also busy making new friends, networking with professionals, and doing a little community service on the side. They look forward to reuniting every year on their birthday over Thanksgiving break, but their childhood home has changed. Just two years after leaving their home for school and service, the Macaulay Subtuplets were given some big news from their parents. Bobby and Kenny felt their house was too big for two, so they wanted to sell. However, they didn't want to give it away to just anyone. The parents wanted the house to go to a good cause. So in 2018, Bobby and Kenny met officials from the Des Moines nonprofit Ruth Harbor, which provides housing and support to young mothers of unplanned pregnancies. The nonprofit was looking for another home to expand its program, and the McCoys felt that their home would be ideal. Bobby and Kenny were proud that their home would carry more happy memories for others in need. Nothing would please us more than the idea of our home being used as a place of refuge to others in need, Bobby said. As the McCaughey clan continues to grow, now Natalie and Brandon are married. People can't help but admire how well-rounded they are. Please share this story with your friends and family.